हेलो एम आर जी रोहित वी हैव टू वेट और शैल वी स्टार्ट हेलो हेलो Hello everyone. I'm not able to hear anything. Uh, is it already going on or? Uh, no, it's not yet started yet. Uh, we are waiting for the other members to join, right? Okay. Hi Gopal, you can start. Okay, okay, I'm starting. Okay, guys. So I am Gopal, and uh, today I'll be delivering this session on HTML, CSS, and JS. So um, let me know first how many of you know what is HTML and what is CSS, right? Uh, Yeah, uh, it will be a two-way communication. So if you if I don't get a response, then it won't it won't be easy for me to deliver it. So I want two-way communication with you. Hello. Uh, actually, HTML is a hypertext markup language. Okay. Which is used as a front end. Uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, clear. Uh, anyone else? Am I audible to all? No? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, anybody else? Uh, I would start. Yeah. Hello, my name is Gagan. Uh, not any. And yeah. Hello. Okay. Am I audible? Yep. Yep. Yeah. HTML is yeah. basically the uh, to develop the structure of the web, any website. Like nearly almost any website will contain the basic structure. So HTML is used to do that. And other technologies, if we are using, then we would incorporate that technology inside it. Okay, so uh, HTML, uh, yeah, uh, it's in by one one that HTML is used to uh, HTML is a hypertext markup language and is used to design the web page. It and, and how it uses to design the web page, it uses uh, it it contains over tags, basic tags. We will uh, let I will let you know the basic tags of the HTML. So what it actually does that the uh, 
it renders the HTML, uh, the tags onto the web browser and the web browser actually what it does it has the javascript uh, runtime engine right which interprets it and design the web page for us right so this is what the html is rendered over the uh, our browser right v8 engine actually it, it is known as v8 engine for chrome yeah so uh, this is all about html so um let me uh, let us know i had uh, mentioned about tags so what is actually tags are so html tags are like a keyword which define uh, which define how a web browser will format and display the content right so if we have how to like let's say i would say that i want a header or i want a link or i want a content i want a card so how we will differentiate so for that html created some tags right so for that uh, the tags are important so like uh, am i clear right now hello hello yes yes, yes. 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 Yeah. So for uh, for to differentiate between the uh, design of uh, that, or to uh, give more power to the developer that uh, you have to make all those stuff. So for that we use tags, right? So there are many tags uh, present in HTML. About uh, I had learned not more, more than that, but yeah, there are many tags. So we had uh, just covered basic tags. The file shared by uh, Rohit. Uh, I I I had uh, I had I will share you the uh, what to say. PPT. I had also shared you the PPT on that. So if anybody wants, and uh, he can access this PPT. Yeah? I won't be uh, pushing out from my server, right? So um, what I actually do is that the um, I have explained it, that the HTML tags are rendered on the uh, Chrome engine, right? So uh, hello? Gopal, I'll I'll stop you for one second. Okay. I I got feedback saying that most people uh, know the basics. Hmm. Uh, so uh, you don't worry. You take your time and you go into as much detail as you want. Uh, don't uh, do basics only. Okay. Even even if the content is not on the PPT, you don't worry. You go into as much detail as you can. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. I can do that. But yeah, for HTML, what we can do that we have to just learn tags, not not the logic and that. So that's not the thing. Right. Yeah. So uh, may maybe uh, you can open uh, say Chrome Dev Tools and uh, share the DOM uh, structure and other things. How to read the CSS? Okay. How to uh, yeah, basically uh, you know uh, get into all that. Don't worry. If if somebody doesn't understand, it is okay. But uh, uh, hmm. go to uh, whatever you can explain. No problem. We have enough time. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, let me explain my PPT first, and I'll explain you some. Things which uh, which are quite important, like so, okay. So uh, this the, uh, there are some header tags, the paragraph tags, the horizontal rule line that we, uh, the line we want. Like if you can see that the line over uh, bottom is a uh, HR tag using, and the link tag anchor tags in some websites. I would say that that over oh, here there will be some links uh, somewhere on website. So that is due to the anchor tags. ULLI for the list. UL means an order list. Uh, OL for order list. Image we can use image. Images RC uh, for div division. Uh, like we, what we actually do that we divide our web page in some division, right? We don't create a, uh, we don't create a messy one, right? We divide our web page in different different parts, right? So for that we use the div tags, right? For a span tag is uh, for the text span tags. It's, it's, I would say it's a child tag for all. It's it's generally known for that. The basic uh, layout of HTML is something like this. Right, the means uh, every uh, HTML uh, file will have uh, all this stuff. Right, without uh, this uh, lines, the HTML file won't won't be won't exist. Right, every HTML file will have this. Right, so what actually doc type uh, HTML shows? It shows the version of the HTML. Right, right now we are using HTML5. So what actually it does? That doc type, doc type, it's uh, sensible that uh, what type of document it is, right? So it shows us that the it is a uh, HTML file. You see what happens we when we render this uh, onto the uh, Chrome engine, right? So how would the uh, Chrome knows? Uh, how would our web browser knows that the it is a HTML file or a normal file, right? So for, with with the help of this doc type HTML, the Chrome usually used to know that yeah, this is a HTML file, and I have to render something like that, okay? The HTML, I would say, it's the main container of the uh, HTML file, right? The main container means every tag will be inside of this. No tag will be going outside of the HTML tag. Other than this, this is not actually a tag. It's uh, just general information to the Chrome that it's a HTML file, right? Nothing more than that. 
uh, head tag is uh, like uh, which contains some uh, information about the web page, not the content of the web page. Right? If I let's say I had created a uh, simple web page, right? Uh, let me show you something. Uh, three dot uh, slash Oswald Gopal. Let's say. Okay, I'm sorry. What happened? Three dot slash. So, right. so uh, this is um, this is simple web page, right? Which I had created for a demo purpose only. So what ha happens that if you can uh, inspect this, right? What I had done actually, I did the inspect element, or we can also see the source by using Control U, right? So it will show us the uh, source, right? So what actually it does? So I have returned the body tag H1 and H2. If you can see that head tag is uh, nothing. Um, no content of a head tag is uh, shown over here. If you can see that inside head tag, I mentioned document, the viewport for the language purpose, right? So nothing is shown over here, right? So this is what uh, head tag does. It shows about the web page. Like if I would say that the uh, what actually this is showing, right? So the title shows about the what is the title of my document? Let's say let me reopen this. So what's the title of my uh, there are many tabs over here. So, right. So let me open that. So what is the title of my, my document? Um, my web page. It's a document, right? So which I mentioned over here. That's the title is this. Now the meta tag. What actually a meta tag is? In HTML, we have meta tag which shows the information, which uh, which is for the information of an any uh, page, right? So what is actually showing that uh, characters to UTF is actually for language. For viewports, uh, it's it, what it actually says that the if I let me open it once again, right? So if what it actually shows the viewport, right? So what what happens in earlier time that the uh, when when I am doing this stuff, right? Let's say the sponsor. So if I was uh, um, like uh, creating a web page bigger or smaller, when the device size of the uh, page, uh, device sizes change changes, then what in a later time what happens that our contents got shrink, right? But now what is what actually it does that you have to use the width content which should be equals to width of the devices. So it's showing something information to the web page, right? So for that we usually use to hide tag that, right? I hope uh, this might be clear to you all, right? Inside high tech, we don't mention any content type, right? But we, like, if I want to add something like, hey, I am Gopal Nuxura, this is my website, or all the stuff will be inside the body tech. No such stuff will be inside the head tech, right? This this is the, I would say, the main key point of this, right? I hope this might be clear, right? Okay, let me come back over here. And inside body tech, we write or all the, uh, I would say, stuffs, right? Like uh, the, let's say, my website it was having this stuff right so this hey i'm gopalo and this is my new website using easy to let's say right so if i also open some of the websites uh, so if i view the source view source of this website then what it actually shows that the hey i'm gopalo swal yeah this is the content and all the contents are showing from over here right like if I would add something, uh, I can't add from right over here, but I from my source or whatever file is that if I add something over here, it will be rendered over here, right? So all the contents of a web page will be inside the um, body tag, right? Is that clear for us? Hello? Right. So this is a, what a basic of HTML. Now, uh, if you can see uh, that I have, let's say, uh, let me uh, check that uh, um, for uh, for a stuff like uh, as Roy was saying that we have to go a little bit deeper. So if I want to inspect this web page, right? So I wanted to know that what inside this web page, how this uh, Google.com, the landing page of the Google.com, is looks like, right? So what we can do, we can do inspect element that Control Shift I, uh, like uh, this is the uh, what I would say Chrome developer tool. I would say that which uh, help us a lot. We can see all the things in the elements, right? And in elements, we can see the uh, the HTML part that uh, how it uh, means what uh, HTML he has written before rendering onto this stuff. Like they have body tag, division tag. Even we can uh, inspect a specific element. Like this is an image or what it is, right? This is an image. Actually, I would say, right? So how I get that this is an image? This is not a text, right? So what actually I did that the let me start from basic, right? So control shift I, what I did, or I would say that inspect element, right? Inspect, then into the elements. And what I did, 
that the uh, this is the selecting element uh, selecting a specific element right we can select this 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 whatever so i have selected this they showed me that this this is the this is the div what there was it is actually a type of container we can say or it is a separator also we divide the page into the multiple divs if you can see that into this web page there are many divs right the flag container they all those stuff right so this is the div and how do i come to know this is an image right so for that what i had then i see the css right and it's not an actual image it's a background image added over that right so what how do i come to know that with the styles part right so we will be covering css part but into the styles what i did the um, i i came to know the css what he has kept over there like uh, he has it has an id that logo default id with the let me cover up css for then i'll be explaining how do i come to know that stuff right so uh, i guess this might be clear to all about the html right hello I'll also share you the useful links for uh, stuff like the code camp having the challenges. It has uh, 1400 challenges on HTML, CSS, and JS. Right, W3 school uh, all knows about this. And CS Howard uh, University uh, course. It also contains Flask and Django and also the some part of uh, Git. Right, but it's, it is having a good course on HTML and CSS. Right. So this is uh, a simple, I would say, the basics of HTML. Now let's go to the CSS. Right. So what actually CSS is, is, is a, it's a cascading style sheet. It, its name sh uh, shows that it is a style sheet, which is used to style our HTML web page. Now, if I would say, let's say, yeah. So this this page is looking so ugly without a style sheet. If you, if you inspect this, like I would say inspect element and then inside body, there are two tags, H1 and H2. There is no styling over there. This is styling is can by default. Uh, some HTML tags have their own styling, right? H1 has its own margin padding. If you can see, uh, P tag is also having uh, its own margin padding. I will uh, let you know what is margin and what is padding, right? So if you can see, this is very ugly web page, right? So to style this web page, what we are actually doing that we will be styling those stuff. We're using CSS. There are many uh, other stuff, right? As CSS, there is SAS, right? But uh, for basic purpose, we usually use CSS, right? So what actually CSS is. Uh, Oh, sorry uh, it's not a hypertext markup language it's uh, i'm sorry for that it's used to design web pages i actually had copied that page also so if you can see that this is having same design uh, so sorry for that uh, so it is used to design the web page right um, it is it is used to design web page right uh, so this is the basic symbol for the css i would say uh, sorry for that page and uh, now um now how do we add css to uh, this uh, like i would say the html tag if i want to change the color of this uh, and i would change to color or i would say font size of this so how do we do doing those stuff this is which will be uh, you uh, which will be done using the css selector right so what are css selectors actually what happens that we have to link something uh, into the html tag uh, to the uh, css file else uh, how do we i know uh, i know that we i have to add the background color black to that uh, that dev or i have to add background color pink to that part right so for that we have to some linking should be there right so there are some selectors these are the five selectors only if you refer to the w3 school there are about 50 to 60 selectors uh, the parent child and all those stuff with the parent child the global selector and there are many selectors, Gopal, right? uh, get to, yeah. can you kindly hold for a second uh, everybody, okay, who, everybody who's on the call, uh, kindly uh, uh, respond. Uh, is this very basic level? If you think it is very basic level, just respond as yes. Otherwise, you can respond as no. Just put it in the chat, whatever you think. Yeah. So, could I keep on to the advanced level? Like... Uh because we me and Rohit was discussing that we have to start from basic we'll start. yeah but i i unfortunately don't know everybody's level of understanding that's that's the reason but i know uh, gopal can manage very advanced this thing also so yeah please uh, gopal go to the advanced part of it yeah no no it's okay go with the phone it's okay, okay the i can do uh, i can do the advanced part too that's not the issue i, I i'll uh, I accept the PPT and what I'll be doing opening just W3 school. Right. 
uh, it will show many things to us or uh, uh, else i would do that we i will inspect the uh, yeah we can we are inspecting this so for, from here i will show you that how we can manage those stuff or i can design this page too over here over here right so mm, this is something uh, very basic right so we are we were losing it right so the basic properties let me uh, first of all uh, if anyone uh, all of you know uh, the basic properties of html uh, css or not hello yeah please respond in the chat uh, basics basic properties right the uh, like i was a text align and all those stuff the margin padding uh, okay uh, margin padding position absolute uh, relative and all those stuff yeah, this Rohit, they know all things. <laughs> so could I jump to the JS part, or JS part, or I would stick to this? Till flow was good. Okay, thanks. So uh, see, uh, uh, margin padding. I don't know if everybody understands. I don't know. Uh, I also don't understand it very well. So if you can cover that, and then you can maybe uh, look at media queries, and then move on to JS. Okay, uh, I, I'll cover the media query from over here. Yeah, there was some example of media query over here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, a uh, margin padding actually what that does that the margin means the distance of that element from the other elements, right? If I would say that the, here are the two elements and two elements are uh, like they are not that far apart. If I would do that, I would do uh, like let's say. Uh, see, we can add styling, uh, like I would say local styling or using that element dot style. So if I inspected this H1, then I can add the styling to this element. If I would say that color, uh, I would say I would say pink. So it can change my color to pink. So this is what uh, we can do over here. That Chrome has provided us the feature. So what I'll be doing that I'll be let's say I'll be having border one pixel solid. So it will be more easy for use to learn black right so this is the border of that and if i would add margin let's say 10 pixel what it will be doing uh, let's say let me uh, add some more i what it will be doing that it's it is taking the distance from the other elements right i hope you're understanding right means margin what actually margin is doing like, yeah you can also uh, like uh, understand it by this that margin is this this part this this yellow part yellow part it's showing it's a margin means the distance from other elements right and what actually padding is if i change this to padding then what it's actually doing it's it's the distance of that element inside that element like uh, let's say what i would say that right, the uh, padding is actually the internal uh, spacing and margin is actually the external spacing right i hope you got it hello if you got it, then you can yeah, inside it. Yeah, Rohit, Rohit, you got it. Hello. Hello. Can you respond me inside the chat or not? Hello. Hello. I'm audible. Hello. Yes. So, yeah. So, hope you understand what is the difference between the margin and a panic, right? Hope you guys know that uh, this is the image picker, uh, color picker. Sorry. So what? Uh, yeah. Let me cover up this. That how I came to know this is an image, not the text. Right. If I can place the text, let's say what I'm doing. That uh, element. I can also add a text, or I can I can do that. Uh, I can add the text looking like this. Right. I can also add that. But how do I come to know this is a background image or what? So we can also see the styling of the of any uh, any element. Oh, default it's having ID. Uh, so what it has also what it has uh, added that styling to here. Right. So if I would say that this is a base 64 image, if I comp copy this and paste it to Google, it will be showing me uh, it's not copied completely. So what I'll be doing. Mm -hmm. If I copy it and paste onto the Google, it's not copying because due to some issues, I would say. Yeah, there was some issue. If I copy this and paste onto the Google, then it, it will be showing me the Google image. Right. So uh, with the help of this inspect element, we can uh, see that the uh, the styling of the web page. Right. 
and the thing which i had done uh, before was this part toggle device tool navigator right? it is used to know the responsiveness of a web page right how responsive the web page is let's say if i would say uh, it's an it's it's on desktop right now right it's it's on it's on responsive that i can check the responsive by uh, it's uh, it's showing that the width and the height of this uh, this area right how i've been doing the stuff right that like uh, if, if i am uh, it also having the device sizes and uh, google uh, google had done this for us right so what actually google had done that the it has uh, by default the set at the uh, some of the uh, i would say tested devices that on iphone uh, sorry on google, on, uh, google galaxy uh, sorry samsung galaxy s5 how it looks like on google pixel how it looks like on iphone sc how it will be looking on i on ipad how it will be looking even we can edit that stuff right we can also add more devices custom devices right so this is what uh, how we can check the responsiveness of a web page that a web page is responsive or not there are some pages which are not responsive if i would say uh, i guess google app is not responsive that much but it will be a google product yeah it's not that much responsive if i would open it on iphone se then it's not yeah it is yeah but it's not that responsive uh, it's it is responsive it's not responsive on ipad right so for with the help of the system uh, can check that the page is responsive or not right i am then check uh, uh we can also we can also do the zoom part on over here right um, the online offline is simple stuff for the um, pws what for those right so i hope this might be clear to all right hello uh, go to js part okay fine okay i'll be going to js part now okay so um, okay. so i go i hope you guys know what is javascript right so it is used to create web pages uh, i even knows about java um, javascript or i would start javascript of basic or advanced level can you do favor for me hello can you do that for for me right guys oh, okay uh, let me start from base uh, yeah rohit is typing something let's see Go ahead with the advance. They all are J second. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, J S is um J S is a language which is used to make a web page dynamic. Let me explain with you example. I would say in HTML we used to create the button. Like HTML, uh, there is a button tag so which help us to create button, right? And uh, using C S S we can style and make it beautiful. But how would uh, the user? Uh, how would we? We will be doing it. How will the Chrome knows that on click of that button we have to log in or log out or whatever we want, right? So that can be done using the, uh, I would say JS, right? JavaScript, right? So um, JavaScript actually uses DOM model, that is document object model, to like uh, create a web page dynamic. There are many frameworks of JS which which are more easier than this part, but yeah, JS actually uses DOM model. Right. So, what actually a DOM model is? DOM model is having some methods, right, which help us to access that HTML elements. Yeah, and CSS also. What I had said that we have to links link between the uh, CSS and the HTML, right? That we have to create a link. That how would I would came to know that we have to style that element or those element. So in the JS also, what we have to do that we have to uh, add something link like between those those element, right? From the HTML element, that how would I came to know that on the click of that button, I have to log in, or on the click of that button, I have to log out, right? So how do we will be doing that? It will be using DOM method, uh, DOM uh, model uh, methods. There are many methods. I had selected two only because these two are the most famous one. Right? There are many more, like about uh, many more methods are there by query selector or many. So what actually document or get element ID is doing? That this method what actually returning the uh, let me explain you with the an example right oh yeah uh, this will be more easy for you guys um, where it is sorry i skipped the jquery part i'll explain you later right so what actually uh document or get element by id actually does that it it uh it accesses that element like let's say what i do the document or get element by id let's say my id on a button uh, is a button right so oh yeah there was a document that got the dot get element by id Yeah, document or get element ID that post which uh, post which user right the, whatever the name is of the ID is given right. So what actually it's given? There was a button 
let's say there is a button with id id is actually an attribute to a button on a, to every tag we will be having an id attribute right i guess you might know this much of uh, uh, html but it is having an id attribute to to provide a uniqueness to a tag right so what actually we will be doing that we will be accessing this this uh, button which is having id this right uh, in, in a Right. See, JS is an actual JS is a programming language, right? It's not an uh, like markup language or styling or thing, right? It's a programming language. So we, we, in this in this programming language, what we will be actually doing that we will be accessing elements using variables and we will be changing all those stuff. We can also have loops and all those stuff. There are there are many things in in the like I would say it's the, uh, JS. Uh, JS right? There are loops and all those stuff. Right? So what actually it's doing that it's accessing that button and what is actually doing the um, now we had access that element and what we I am actually doing let me show you over here there are some few examples with me also uh, which I had kept in proper uh, PPT so let me show you with that then I'll be going to explain this page uh, which Rohit shared me to explain right call it. So uh, yeah, this is the same example post get chooser. So what actually we had done that we, we had created a button with the ID element this, and we had uh, stored it in a variable. Like in uh, JS, uh, there are two methods. There are actually um, many methods, uh, three methods to uh, create a variable. That is var, that is let, and that is const. Const is for const uh, constant variables. Var and let have the scope uh, changes. Right? Var is having the global scope, and let is having uh, local scope of that element. If you are having issue with this scope, you can check out the references link, and there you will be go get to know this stuff, right? So what actually we are doing, we are stored that HTML button into this, and what we will be doing that if that button is clicked, that is an on click element, uh, I would say event over there. So if that button is clicked, then what we have to do, we have to call this function. Actually, actually, it's an anonymous function. We can also create an arrow function is that and that. So there are two types. There are many types of function in HTML, uh, JS. Like we can create a function without a name that is known known as the anonymous function, right? Which doesn't have any name, right? We can call it directly, right? It it calls itself directly. When wherever wherever we used to uh, uh, define that uh, function, it call it uh, automatically. It will be called when this. Uh, condition has been satisfied. This condition means that button has been clicked. Right. So when the button has been clicked, we or we access the post page chosen button and set at the attribute. I guess all you know is the attributes, right? In HTML, uh, let me open some HTML. Uh, I would say this is the our HTML Google, right? And this HTML is having some ID attribute. The tag attribute there will be an also attribute of style for the inline style, right? Right. So there will be a styling attribute which we have to what we have to set set attribute which attribute style attribute with with the values color yellow and all those stuff right and what right so this is how we will be making this dynamic right so this is uh, what uh, what uh, Rohit I had chosen uh, I had selected this example from this file only right so this is what we, how we will be the changing the color dynamically right of a button. If you can see that earlier the color of the button, let's say, was black or whatever is what said before, right? And on click of that button, it, the color of the, uh, I would say, the button will be changed. I don't know. This is a button or whatever. Yeah, we can have the, I would say, yeah, it's it's a button or say. So on click of that, the uh, the color of that uh, text inside that button will be yellow. The background color will be black. The phone where it would be bold, right? And also there will be a uh, some stuff. It's not on the click of that. Uh, there will, we can also access the like I would say. Uh, let's say that this, uh, we can also see uh, some of the styling properly. Actually, uh, we ID. We can access that element without right? display. Like how we want to uh, display that dynamical. So, sorry. So, um, so what we had done that we had access that HTML element and dot display. Dot display what actually does? Um, I guess you might know what display property in CSS is, uh, HTML or yeah, CSS is. Right. 
it's for the display if i would say it's unset it's unset that it will what it will be doing that it's unsetting the all display properties for that if it's display none that it will be uh, hidden for us like it has display relative uh, absolute or whatever we can do right so this is how we generally use to access the uh, we can add the dynamic uh, uh, things to the our html right this is how we do. and there is one more example which is having calling the ajax api right uh, the part we will be covering right this yeah this is uh, from the same file only the ajax like i guess it, this was the example yeah so uh, how do we call it and let's say there was an element uh, i would say a button with sql chosen right and we had access it by id element we can also access it using class element as i explained before that is one more that is a query selector right we can access it using that stuff also it depends on us that how we want to use but generally uh, we usually use to document or get element by id it it's its name also show now um, its name also show that the document get element by id means get the element by id now if you are uh, like some of you might confuse that why its document is written right so what actually js does it, it it doesn't treat the html file as an html file it treats that html file as an document file right it doesn't know that yeah it's html or whatever it is a it is a document file for me right and what we have to do document dot get element by id means it is treating that all the text as an element of that document right so this is the actual meaning of that uh, document dot get element by id right so what it's actually doing it's accessing that uh, square chosen uh, element with that id where it's stored in in a in a variable right it returns the uh, HTML part, I would say, because I had also mentioned that it, it returns the HTML content collection object. It returns the HTML collection object. We can also add the HTML styling and all those stuff. We can also change the uh, the part of those stuff. And uh, if I had, let's say, uh, it's, 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 sorry, I would say Google. So we can also change the placeholder, I would say, or I can change this, 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 whatever I want. If I can change this, I can change this also. If I would say, then we can change the, uh, I would say that background color. If I would remove this, I would add, let's say, background, uh, oh, good, background, iPhone image, and I would say a URL. Let's say I have taken an image from Google, and we can copy image address so what it actually will be doing that it, it, it will be copying image address for me so if i uh, link that so what i actually do if i know not the none if i do this and i would add um, there's something show over here uh, google is quite smart I, uh, it's not uh, let me add this stuff but we can add uh, yeah, i can do it in local server that's why I go back. Yeah. I can add uh, background image to this element. Or I would say this element. I can add that. Okay. I can also add the background um, black and all those stuff. Whatever I want to change. Right. So we can change this using the JS also. Right. We can change the background color, whatever I want to change. Like I had chosen, selected that. Yeah. So we had, let's say we had uh, changes the color, background color, and font but also. Right. So what this Ajax is actually doing, it's a quite a part of a jQuery. It's a part of jQuery actually, right? And this is uh, uh, known as a selector for a jQuery. Like uh, using using this also, we can access the HTML elements. Right? Using jQuery, we can also change the C uh, CSS and the HTML content of that web page. Right? jQuery is also a very good stuff. So what we actually will be doing that uh, we will be calling an AJAX uh, request. Right? AJAX is actually uh, full form is. Uh, asynchronous javascript and xml uh, i guess this is this wants to stop right so what we'll be doing and we will be calling a request right let's uh if i want to access some data from a server right? let's say there are some apis like i would say the api slash github.com slash user now i want to access this data this data to my html file if i want to show this data dynamically this is my username if i change the username it is changing the data i would say like that so it is changing the data, right? So if I want to call this request using my web page, right? So how do I be calling that? Calling those stuff, right? Uh, for the, like, I will be calling that uh, request 
right HTTP, HTTP request that's all that is also called as API or which is middle yeah, API is the application programming interface which act as interface between the front end and the back end or I would say okay. right so how do we be calling those stuff so that will be using uh, the LAX right so we have to mention URL the URL which I had uh, done that is API slash dot github dot com slash or user slash also Google whatever the user the type of request that is a uh, post request or get request if it is a get request then we will don't we don't need to send the data uh, right we will be sending whatever id video we want to do it and the url also right? so the data type right what type of data will be sending it's a json or it's a plain text or it's a binary coded or whatever the data is right then the data right what data will actually sending to those stuff right that api what data it's actually taking and what response is actually doing sending to us right so this is how we will be calling the uh, http request in our web pages right so this is uh, all about the ajax and the same is uh, i would say uh, resources for us because they these three are also having the html cc javascript and media queries all those stuff right i would prefer you to go with this because it is having actually i am also learning this uh, from over here so this is a very good uh, thing and the brand the mentor is awesome right you can learn from over here now if i come to the media queries uh, uh, Rohit, hello uh, do i explain some more of what js or uh, this might be comfortable right because uh, what actually they have to learn some uh, like uh, other stuff to know things like this let's say there are some uh, <coughs> if i can see the hover property and there are some more that the mouse uh, mouse out the mouse in right so do i explain this uh, also this stuff or i will switch to media right he's typing something what to store function in a constant uh, if that possible uh, thanks a lot okay fine so uh, let me explain you how do i um, like store a function in a variable right um, I don't think so. I'm having the edit access to this. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's a public, so I don't have that access. So how do we be storing that into those stuff? Let me see. Uh, so it will take a next stop. Like I will let me create a touch, and uh, what I'll be doing, um, it will take a lot of time. Yeah. Actually, I'm having some projects but uh, that are confidential okay so leave it so uh, if, pos if possible then i can show it over you yeah i can show it over you so what i had actually done um, or like i can uh, show it like this in this file i can show yeah let me open this first right so this is somewhat um let me remove this stuff this is a web page the simple web page uh, um, we use a script tag doesn't have that extension right we use script tags for writing our uh, js right so what i have to do we can create uh, our um, variables using three that is a const right using more and using let so i'll be creating a const and let's say i created a variable let's say uh, login function let's say i want to create and uh, i can create this function using three methods I'm showing you all three methods, right? So I can first method is will be simple like uh, function, and that will be a login, and I can say that uh, um, I would show that uh, console dot log, and I would say login success. This is the first method to uh, show you how we can do. I would say that uh, login first method. I would share you the file uh, if you need. Right. The second method will be the using anonymous function. What actually anonymous function I explained you earlier also that uh, that doesn't have any name, right? If you can see that this function is having a name, but anonymous function does not have their name, right? That these are the function which are called automatically where they're, they're defined, right? So if I would say that the second function, now how would I'll be declaring the second function is using the anonymous function. So what I'll be doing that I'll be, um, let's say I'll be doing a function and this will be an anonymous function for me and i would say the same copy the same and paste it right 
but uh, the anonymous function what we have to do we don't need to call it uh, wherever it's declared we also need to call it somewhere else right? let's say uh, we are having login courses using three methods google facebook and uh, let's say twitter so i can create three anonymous functions for that so what i'll be doing i'll be storing this anonymous function in a variable that will be a const variable or whatever generally we prefer cons because we don't want to we don't want any change in this function so what i'll be doing it will be a login function right and this will be our uh, this part and this part is actually the same thing now right this is using the anonymous function this is using a basic function and the third method is using arrow function there is one more function in, in javascript that is known as arrow function right i would say third method that will be arrow function that will be i would say login and this what i have to do i have to create an arrow then this yeah so these three methods are creating the same function but they are there are the different methods now and nowadays what xmax uh, there was a latest version in december and 19 uh, december 19 yeah december 19 there was the latest version of javascript which is known as xmax xmax script right it's a javascript also known as xmax uh, script so what it actually uh, recommends um, there's a spelling mistake so we can find that's not the thing so what xmax script uh, recommends us to create this functions what xmax uh, script prefers uh, it created a standard that we have to create functions using the arrow function right in the older versions of uh, ECMAS script that ECMAS script one two we usually use to create using this then we use will wow. we use as the uh, uh, what we have to do like uh, anonymous function then now it's a standard to use the uh, what I would say the arrow function now what actually arrow function is uh, it's a name it's a type of anonymous function only but the basic difference is this this arrow sign right if I remove this and add one arrow over here and it will be my arrow function right so uh, what why it is uh, more uh, feasible to you like, actually what it's actually feasible because uh, it is a uh, what actually google or javascript actually says that the uh, it, it it becomes easier for the compiler or v8 engine to read this as compared to this and this right because earlier what ha what actually it's happening that we, when we declare the our function we're using this then our v8 engine has to uh, search that it is a function it is a it is a keyword or it's a normal variable right we can't uh, we can't check that it, uh, it, it, that a string is a normal variable or it's a it's a keyword keyword means that uh, is having a predefined meaning right that function is having Light and right, it's, they are having pretty friendly. Right? So for that, in this uh, in this uh, anonymous function, there was the same problem that uh, our V8 engine has to check that it's a uh, yeah, it is. But for this, there is no such variable exists with this stuff, right? This variable. so it it becomes easier for V8 engine to read that yeah, it is an error function. Right? It doesn't check anything. Yeah, it shows that okay, it's a it's a error function. It is. For this, we have to show. We have to check that. Yeah, it's a uh, what is it? What it is actually. Right. So this is what uh, we, we usually use to create uh, functions in JS. Right. Uh, am I clear? Mm, can you copy paste? Okay. I'll sharing this three stuff in the Slack channel. I would say. Yeah. I can share in Slack or I can also share in chat. I can also share in chat. So this time. Uh, do not do it if any issues okay okay i'll first in slack like what it is in general i will press i've done it okay Ruit, so that's it or i would uh, let me explain you about some jquery yeah that uh, i missed out yeah here it is as you can see this is the normal styling but this is something weird you will be thinking that what uh, what this is, what this is actually so what it's actually doing it's a jquery which is used and there, see there are four methods to make a web page responsive right there is a viewport which i mentioned on the like i would say onto the uh, html tag the meta tag i mentioned over there uh, i showed you that using bootstrap using css grid and css flexbox uh, sorry css grid uh, bootstrap and using media query 
right? We can also uh, make a web page responsive. Responsive means like uh, if I showing this web page, let's say, let's stretch. Yeah, this is uh, actually this is created using vanilla. Uh, what is what that is? I forgot the name. Rebuild .js. Right. So this is responsive. So what actually it's doing that if I would say that if I increasing the size of the uh, I would say device, it's increasing the size of device. You can see that the uh, the size of the text is increasing. So how it actually does? How it's doing? Like if I decreasing the size and it's it's decreasing and I'm increasing, then it's increasing. So how it's actually doing? So it's doing with the help of media query only. So like, what actually media query is doing this is uh, this what actually it it's mean uh, this thing means that uh, you can understand this um, for only this this that max width right uh, we can see it like a condition that max width is, is 765 means maximum width should be 765 for this condition uh, for this styling i would say like if the screen size is greater than 765 then this styling will work else this styling won't work Right. If I uh, the screen size, we can also check the screen size using this. Let's say I would say that here is the screen size. If I would say that it's a seven sixty five, then it this is a seven sixty five by I would say four hundred. So this is a seven sixty five four hundred screen size. If I increase this, I increase. Right. So we can check the media query using this. Right. So if I added that the maximum width should be seven sixty five, so that our uh, the off canvas whatever uh, the element was we had access using the class selector dot represent the class to add that right so th that position should be relative the transitions should be this right the transitions uh, transitions are actually the uh, the moment uh, i would say like when we are changing some stuff the i would you can also see the transition i can explain you like this if you can see my PPT, there are transitions in there. Yeah, this, this, this. These are actually transition. Transitions are there. So when we are transition, and so we had sh uh, shown over this transition that it should tag this type and uh, the transition type, whatever all. Right? The web kit actually showing for the different browser, right? If you, if you anyone of you having the question that uh, we I had written the CSS, but it's not working on Safari or it's not working on the uh, Microsoft Edge. Yeah, Microsoft, yeah, like whatever the name is, I forgot the name. Right, the older browser or Mozilla, I would say. Or uh, I am also having a new web browser that is uh, Brave. It's also it's a product of Google, but yeah, it's a new browser to use. Right, so it's not working on those. So what we have to do, we have to add styling uh, according to those stuff, right? Because th there is a little bit of changes. Like uh, we don't need to add this every time for the specific things we have to add. Right, because what actually it's doing that all the web browsers are, are having different engines, right? They are uh, they are reading these files in a different way, not in a similar way, right? So for them to explain them in a better way, so we usually use this stuff, right? So I hope this might be clear. Uh, yeah, if uh, we touch that, if anybody having question, then yeah. Anyone, anyone, Kush, anyone having a question? Um, okay, fine. Um, I'll stop presenting. I mean, thank you. Have a good day. Wait, you want to say something? Hello. Thank you for today. No doubt from my side. Thanks, sir. Okay, fine. Then if no doubts, then I can also leave. Okay, I guess there's no some issue. If you are having, then you can um, Slack me. Like, I can, I'm ready to help. Slack. Good to close. Thanks. No issue. Okay, bye. Then have a good day. Good evening. Uh, yeah, whatever.